Hello everybody, welcome to the Matt Palace Podcast. My name is Aiden Ng, author of the Chronicles of Terror web serial novels and the host of today's episode. For those joining us, the Matt Palace is a podcast by a group of writers of varying backgrounds, publication histories, experiences, and genres. We're here to talk about stories, writing, and maybe some book reviews on the side. Uh, let's see who we have today for our guests. Hi, I'm Jennifer Flass, author of the Black Pearl series. Okay, so hello, my name is J.A. Waters. I'm the author of Lincia, Oceans of Shelter, and a random array of nonsense in the sci-fi and fantasy realms. Oh yeah, I didn't say that it was fantasy again. Oh well. Uh, I'm Kathy Joy, author of The Gatekeeper and The Brotherhood, uh, both fantasy serial fictions. And hi, I'm Marie Howald. I'm the author of Focal Point, Blood, Sweat and Runes, and lots of other stuff, which is generally very supernatural. All right, um, so today's topic is going to be about writer's block, which is pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, Again, I'm guessing some of us have had the experience of uh, experiencing writer's block before and others don't. You guys have any thoughts on whether it's it's actually a real thing or just something that, like everything else, we make up? <laughs> I, I, I'm... Well? I've never... Um... I don't ever really consider myself blocked. I mean, I guess I've sat in front of a computer and stared at the blinking cursor. I, I would be surprised if none of us have ever been in that position, but um, it's either that, I, that I'm that i distracted by other things or don't have the time to write. The idea of writer's block is... Um, I would always call it other things. I think it would be more considered a writer's block if it went on for maybe <clears throat> days, maybe weeks at a time, I guess. Right. I don't think I've ever been in that position. Yeah, I kind of uh, see the meaning of writer's block as an inability to get into flow somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've thought about it and I think there are three kinds. And one of them is not an actual block, it's more like external factors, like you were saying, Jennifer, with uh, lack of time or other commitments, things like that. Or it could be some kind of internal conscious factor, like fear of failing or, you know, the fear of starting a story wrong or stuff like that. And the third kind, I think, is what I would mostly call the block, which is when your subconscious part of your brain is not sort of ahead of you if that makes sense it's a fancy way of saying that you don't know what to write yeah so i guess we're still trying to define it at this point almost i mean you know all what? writers talk about it like we all know what it is and i bet that no two writers have the same idea of what writer's block actually is so maybe we should share our experience with it should, um well for we me we also have talking block topic <laughs> yeah well for me um uh, to me what writer's block is is when you have something that you can write you know what to write and it's already in a way um on an ongoing project but you for some reason or another you just can't continue with the writing and, and basically what jen said is staring at the blinking cursor but just for days and weeks and months at a time and making minuscule progress on your writing. Yeah, that's what I would consider it too, but I I don't do a lot of that. I do a lot of other things, but not that, and that's what I would consider writer's block. I think I yeah. did have them when I was younger, really, but uh, I kind of stopped <laughs> uh, having that sort of block, and I I think I found a way to, I don't know, avoid it that works for me personally. Um, if I don't know what to write, I found that either I don't know a character well enough to figure out what that character would do 
next. So if if I'm stuck, it's probably that I just need to sort of mull it over and live with that person in my head for a few days to think about what would they do if they were facing this situation. Or I don't know my world well enough yet to um, keep going. Like I've gotten stuck somewhere. All of the characters have to know something that I don't know. And so that's, those are the times that I get stuck, but it's more like I have to go in my head or, or think about the world or just mull over the character. So I don't ever feel like I'm not writing. I'm just not putting words on paper. Is that a cop out? Is that writer's block? It makes, I think it makes sense. I mean, I think that's what I'm, what I meant about the subconscious part of the brain, not being yeah. ahead of you, so yeah, just, just you don't know enough. I think that's a good way of putting it. Uh, what about Joe and Kathy? Do you guys have any experience with this? I only had really b- bad writer's block once uh, a few years ago, so if you'd probably asked me this question a couple of years ago, I probably would have said you know, similar things to uh, Marie and Jennifer. And I used to hop from project to project, but I was always doing something. If I was stuck somewhere and one thing I was working on, I might jump to later on a different scene near the end or in the middle, or I would jump to another project. But a couple of years ago, I had a lot of things happening. And I was also taking a a home study course. Um, My daughter was going through a diagnosis for a learning disorder. Uh, So we were going to appointment after appointment and I was trying to fit things in and then I decided, you know, I'm going to sit down and write. And so I got uh, my husband to take, you know, my my daughter out and I sat there and nothing happened at all. I couldn't think of an idea. I couldn't connect with the characters. I couldn't connect with the story. You know, and it went on for quite a while and it was really unpleasant. Um, so I had to sit and reprioritize things in my life. I, I put off studying for the year and I took a time off to work on writing and, and that really helped. So that that for me was writer's block, the, the complete inability to connect with writing, characters, you know, world, setting, everything. So as if uh, your life overwhelmed, your, your, your real life overwhelmed the fiction. Hmm. I've definitely experienced that where when I finally get some time off, the last thing I can do is sit down and write. My It's like insomnia. Your mind is just spinning too fast and you can't, you can't do what you need to do. Um, and that's, again, I guess, I guess I'm considering that a, a different sort of problem than mm. writer's block. But, but, I mean, yeah, it's a kind of block, but it's more based on the external factors, I think. Yes. And, and you're stressing about them. Mm-hmm. Because if they weren't there, those factors, you would be writing, I think. Mm. Uh, Joe, what about you? Your experience? Well, I don't know that I have any direct experience with writer's block specifically so far. I mean, I can definitely... I've definitely had experiences where I'm too tired or too busy. I mean, right now, for instance, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, uh, moving about and and that kind of like just real life reorganizing my life. But I don't consider myself to have any kind of writer's block. I just consider myself to be, I don't have time for that right now. And I have to reprioritize, um, similar to how Kathy was dealing with a bunch. She had to reprioritize. I have... I'm running into the same issues where I don't necessarily have a problem with writing. I still have plenty of ideas and it's kind of like Jen said, still writing in her head. I'm still writing in my head. I still have ideas and I'm still taking notes when I get them on my phone or what notebooks I have lying around. Um, I guess I would say that I've seen creator's block affect me because I don't really draw that much uh, anymore. And a lot of that is kind of, I feel like I've kind of got a bit of an artist block where I haven't been able to really get into the groove of any kind of art in a very long time. But I think 
some of that is probably just because my focus changed to writing. So I'm not I'm not sure if that counts either. <laughs> so it might be, just be that when you lose connection to your creative self, that's that's what a writer's block is. Yeah, it certainly I think was so. for me. I think. Hmm. I mean, some people have to write for a very deadline-based living, where they're they must write over and over again. And I mean, someone that works at a newspaper or something like that, maybe they don't feel like they ever have writer's block for their work projects because that's a very linear fashion of just do this and this method and get it done. But maybe in their personal life, they're like, I'm just so tired of writing. I can't ever find myself getting into it anymore. But then I'm just getting theoretical. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> Yeah, has have any of us written to a deadline that's something we didn't make for ourselves? Because I'm wondering if that, yeah. if if having to finish a piece of, um, no, I mean like writing, <laughs> having to finish a piece of writing by a certain time and you're unable to write it, um, that I don't, all of my deadlines are self-imposed. So that might that might feel like writer's block to me. Do do uh, essays for schools count? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, um, I was always able to get those done. So I ahead. remember that uh, when when I was a kid and and I studied, um, I would always get ideas for stories. The more I had to write a write a paper or an essay, the more ideas I would get for a story and want to write that instead. So I would get extra focused on getting that essay out of the way and or paper and write that so that I could write what I really wanted to write which was a story right yeah I had that lot especially when I was in school yeah same here it's uh, uh I'm not sure if it's the same for you guys but um over here when we are writing we in a what we call primary and secondary school uh, which is 7 to 16 year old uh, we are required to write composition essays, which is about 600 words, um, and you're always given like a time limit of half an hour to two hours. Do you guys do that? Only at exams for us, otherwise it's more like you have to hand in this thing in a week or in two days or something like that. Oh really? We have it like every, every week. So um, I find myself writing quicker in those circumstances where I why I um, you know, have a imposed deadline that's not my own, and often I overwrite what was given to me, like a six hundred word count limit. I once written eighteen hundred words instead of six hundred <laughs> words, <laughs> um, and uh, my teacher actually forced me to split it into three parts for different submissions instead. <laughs> Well, hey, you have three done instead of one, yeah? <laughs> I actually had a class that had a pretty similar approach to writing assignments. Um, it was back quite a while ago. It was um, one of those AP-style classes where every week we had to write an essay, and it was a timed essay, and we were basically given 30 minutes to, hey, write this as quickly as possible. Here's your subject. Here's your format that you have to follow. Now go write. Um, but I find that external deadlines make it easier for me to write or to do anything creative because then it's no longer for me. And so my standards no longer matter. Now it's just to the standards of whoever I'm writing or creating for. Well, that, that makes sense. Um, I remember when I had a very long period of inability to write creatively on my own, I, I was still doing well with, um, with schoolwork where I, ha I had an uh, imposed deadline. So uh, I guess um, the follow-up question would be, do you guys think that's the method of getting out of whatever form of writer's block that a person has? Or is there some other method of, you know, um, breaking the spell of writer's block? But I think I... Uh, well, I've heard a few tips about getting out of them, but for me, it's more about uh, avoiding getting into a writer's block. And I do that by... Yeah, I'm in a situation right now where I can uh, actually write every day, practically, uh, and just not very much every day, and that's good, in a way. 
I never run out of ideas. I don't write myself dry. I just write and then I stop and the story is inside my head and it still lives in there and I want to write more and then the next day I sit down and put my fingers in the keyboard and then it happens again. Oh yeah, I found that if I want to like get maximum word count whenever we're doing uh, like NaNoWriMo where you're trying to get a number of words every day or you have your own personal goal, if I write before I go to bed in a notebook and the first thing I do the next day or the next time that I can write the next day is type that out, I will just keep going like crazy. So um, that's one of the ways I can trick myself into thinking about it sort of overnight yeah. <laughs> when I have all the time Not getting while I'm off. sleeping. <laughs> and it actually helps me sleep to get sort of my thoughts out first and then... In the morning, I have all of these new ideas. It's like magic. So you I never tell even myself stories get out of your night. groove. <laughs> yes. It's like a permanent groove. Yes. Yep. We are so in the groove, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy, do you have any thoughts on how to get out of a writer's block? It only happened to me once. I do find that um, schedules or you know things that we were, we were talking about do help especially if it's one set by an outside um so either like a competition deadline or nanorimo or anything because if i set myself one i'll be like oh yeah but i can write a few more hundred words like next week and make up for it and then i don't <laughs> but if it's if it's like an external source that is is setting it i do tend to work to but not always sometimes a deadline kind of puts me off so it's kind of roulette with me <laughs> like sometimes it will work and sometimes i'll be like oh i hate this deadline i don't want to do it and then i then i won't want to do it um, right sometimes the deadline is more stress when i was yeah. already stressed and then i can't write because of stress <laughs> that i've made up for myself yes i hear you yeah I mm. have a note here that I wrote earlier saying, be kind to your muse. I think what I meant <laughs> was that you you have to sort of give yourself that space to get back into writing. And I think one good idea could be to talk out loud about your book or story. It could be to your dog or your mom or yourself or whoever's around. Um, and just sort of let yourself feel that story and 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 feel the characters and feel why it is that you actually want to write this story by talking about it i used to do that when i was a kid a little bit like if i wanted to get excited about a story i would kind of imagine if the book was like a trailer you know when you had a trailer back in the 80s 90s you'd have that guy with the deep voice like in a world where this happens <laughs> and then these people do this and I would imagine my story with the deep voice guy, like just narrating the trailer for my my epic story, and I'd be like, "Yeah, then they're gonna do this and save the world." <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of what I mean. Or you can listen to music and, and or read a book and, and not, I mean, not necessarily be inspired by the book you read, but sort of get words into your head so that you end up creating things with words yourself. Does that make any sense? Hmm. The books are kind of recharging for me. Yeah. I don't always I don't always get inspired by the content, but just the feel of another author's voice and how they're doing it and crafting it and you know, watching somebody else build a world. I think, yeah, actually, I, I could go and uh, do that. It's like giving your yeah, brain exactly. a it's like giving your brain a break. It's like, oh, I I can you know, rest a while from making my world and just enjoy something that's already built by someone else. Hmm. How do you guys feel about um, the authors that you'll see that say you have to write every day and make it a priority of make sure that you get words written every day? <laughs> they say those people have no children. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, f I find that if I go a couple of days without writing sometimes all of those ideas are actually all built up and I'll write more the next time I get the chance mm, the th sometimes yeah the thing is I think writing is you, you built it off from your life so if you have to write every day you're not 
technically living your life every mm. day. You know, you need to get inspiration from things that are happening around you, from the people that are around you, and. But if you are always face buried into a notebook or your computer, or if you're really old school a typewriter, then you know that what you write might not be alive. It might be. Yeah. Oh. It might be like a linguistically beautiful because you spend hours tweaking it, but it might not end up realistic in the sense that it invokes the emotions of people in a. Uh, real way i guess yeah i think you kind of have to think about you know what's better you can have a hundred thousand words that you know you've churned out every day or you can have a thousand but you know they're full of depth and emotion because they're filled with things you've experienced and done and you have a personal connection to it and i think when you read you can usually tell when a writer is you know connecting to something and when they're just <coughs> you know, painting by numbers almost, like, I think this is going to happen and there's no emotion behind it, you know. I, I get the point, but I think you can get into a state where you are able to actually produce something every day. Maybe not for hours every day, but, but you can sort of live the story uh, besides living your own life and get a bit written every day. And I think for me, that's a really good way of doing it. Um, but of course, I do miss a few days now and then. And as long as that's okay, then I get the idea of, on the whole, try to write or try to think about your story or try to do something writing related every day. I get that. I think if it's just, you know, living in your story every day, that's more. A lot more re reasonable. That's something you can do at work, and you can do on transit. You don't have to be exactly. Yeah, you don't have to be writing to be able to do that. You know. Yeah, I'd say that I do that. I like that wording. Living in your story every day. That's definitely my style. I mean, we all became writers to have more than one life, didn't we? Mm. Right. Live in a world that we control. <laughs> we control them. Well, <laughs> some more than others. I think I lost control of all of mine. They just do what they want. Yeah, I think some of that goes to the the argument of seeking out inspiration versus uh, waiting for it. Like you hear about people that just wait for inspiration and don't ever get it. It's like I'm just waiting around for my muse to eventually tell me what to do. But I personally have always been more of the opinion that. No, you have to kind of go and do things that you basically collect inspiration unconsciously, and that's what actually leads to you being awakened sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I definitely wait for, you know, the next part of the story or what would the character do, but I'm doing that by researching how submarines work and so obviously i'm not just sitting around waiting i'll go to somewhere with i don't know waterfalls or i mean so you're you're totally right that even waiting for inspiration you're going to where you think you're going to be inspired uh actually just now um something interesting was mentioned um that if you kept writing or at the very least um you you speak out your 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 world out loud then you would be able to continue writing but uh for me i generally don't find that effective because uh, it always feels like once i write something down um it's done i'm that that word is that word that story is out and i'm not taking it back again so i generally keep my stories in and until they're ready and when i write them out um, I just keep going and I don't stop with it. So uh, this is more like an advice for the for those people who have not been able to um, write constantly. Um, sometimes it's not about writing constantly, it's just about having a story to tell. And uh, if you're afraid that once you tell it, it's over, then maybe you should build it up before you tell it. Right. Definitely. I, I think I actually do that with uh, shorter fiction. Longer fiction, I don't. But for short stories, it's always about making it sort of 
go around in my head and and sort of become a bigger bigger story or bigger bigger idea and uh, at the end i just write the whole thing yeah Yeah, i don't think any one method or piece of advice is going to work for every writer you mean that that list of 10 ways to be a better writer is is not de facto the you know law and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what about that how to write a bestseller thing that I <laughs> yeah um, I, I believe that if you need those things you're not doing it right <laughs> I think you're right, right. Yeah. Okay, um... I always find it odd to. it's a bit off topic but I always find it odd to read articles about how to get ideas or how to write a story in a certain genre I'm like but they write themselves. I mean, you, you, they don't write themselves, but but you just write and then you find out what the stories are afterwards. Sort of mm. the ideas just get there. I was just thinking I could see if you are a ghostwriter or you're working for some company that says, hey, write us this story. Here's the X, Y, and Z of where you need to go with this. And here's the ending how it must be like if you're writing the story version of um a new hope or something it's like just write the same story except in book form i mean then maybe you need something like that because then you're no longer feeling it you're no longer just writing what you feel like oh that's true i think i find those useful for when you are finished and you are attempting to pitch it And so you think, dear God, what is this thing I've written? I'm not sure what genre. (laughs) So you find yourself combing through it and and you come up on things like, you know, (coughs) how to write mystery or fantasy. And you go through it and you're like, oh, well, maybe it's fantasy or maybe it's horror. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Because you've got to pitch it as something. If you go up to them and be like, oh, it's just something. They're not going to take it. They, they, you know, they want you to say, oh, it's this. That's true. Yeah, but other than that, they're not very helpful. They either tell me what I already know, or they give what I think is terrible advice. <laughs> and it's it, same thing with the the write every day thing. To you know, go back in time to that um, the idea that you have to write every day seems to be one of those things that I could see that being useful for someone that they have to complete four books that year or something like that. I mean, Mm. in that case, then, well, well, yeah. Then it's just your job. It's no longer a love letter to your world. It's, it's a, it's like a business outline and you're just filling out the dots, connecting the dots. I I think maybe the important thing is to, instead of, of say, sort of imperatively you have to write every day then you should more think of it as allow yourself the possibility of writing every day if it's important to you Ooh, i have a theory okay we would all consider ourselves people who have been writing always writing right since we were kids like all of us are in that boat maybe writing is like a uh, like a skill where the number (laughs) of hours you put in is your proficient, you know, the basic level of how good you are at it. Like, flying a plane so many hours, you get to go up to the next level of what you're allowed to take on. So maybe the people who say write every day are people who need to pick up the writing hours. Like, we've been accumulating writing hours since we were little, but maybe somebody that just started writing in college needs to write every day to get to a place where they can string a story together. Oh, that, that makes sense. That's a really good point. So, Maybe it's just so the about the world is catching up with us. Kind of... Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> but if you have the inspiration to write every day, then you oh. can write every day, right? Absolutely. I mean... <laughs> oh, you can never hurt if you, if you can find the time. I just think that if you demand of yourself it might take away some of the the spark of it i mean if you can find time in it you can make it naturally in your day because then you get the similar sort of problem some people are a bit adverse to deadlines and if you're telling us if you're writing for the sake of making your target it might not necessarily be something you're proud of at the end 
that makes me think of a question. Do, do you, any of you think that you could be forced to burn out? Like, if you were told you have to write a thousand, let's say two thousand words every day, do you think you would be burned out? Do you think you could get burned out if someone gave you some limit that you had to do? I think that's a form of writer's block as well. Hmm. If I, okay, like you were saying before, if I was writing a story somebody handed to me, like if somebody wanted me to write their story, um, it depends, it depends how much stake I had in it, but I would have a pretty easy time, I think, doing that, writing to a prompt or to something somebody told me to write, but if... I had to creatively come up with 2,000 of my own words every day. I might, I would, I would definitely have times when I would get tapped out. I would probably get my second wind and start a new story. But when I get to the end of a story, I am not producing at that level, even, even when I'm writing at my best. So when I'm getting to the end of a story, I'm probably only doing a couple hundred words a day because it needs to end right. So. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I, I I would feel I would definitely feel some stress over. I would hit a point. I'd hit a wall. Right. I think we're back to the 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 idea of you know forcing versus allowing yourself to write, and I think for a period of time I would be fine with doing a couple thousand words every day. It wouldn't be a problem if I'm in the flow, but if something outside happens, uh, something I have to take care of, something that that wouldn't allow me to write, then it would be a problem all of a sudden to allow my mind to be ahead of me or the subconscious part of my mind to be ahead of me. And then I would catch up to myself and not know what to write for a period of time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I guess that's a good point to end this podcast. So um, thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, once again, uh, for our guests, we have Jennifer Flath. Um, author of the Black Pearl series. It's a young adult fantasy adventure. And you can find me at um, Facebook, the Black Pearl series, and Twitter at Jen with two N's, Snork, S N O R K. And I am J A Waters. I'm the author of Lincia and Oceans of Shelter. They're both fantasy stories, and I also do sci fi stuff. I can be found on Twitter at J.A. Waters Author. And I am uh, Kathy Joy, author of uh, The Gatekeeper and The Brotherhood, both urban fantasy serials. I can be found on Twitter at Kathy underscore H underscore Joy. And I'm Marie Howald. I'm the author of Focal Point, Blood, Sweat and Runes and lots of other stuff. That's usually literary supernatural fantasy of some kind. And on Twitter, I'm at M. Howald. And once again, I'm Aidan Ng, author of the Chronicles of Terror web serial novels. You can find me at Twitter at Aidan underscore Ng, Ng as in N-G. And once again, I want to thank you all for watching us and hope to see you next time. Bye. 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 Is anyone Goodbye. actually watching us though? <laughs> I mean, the Illuminati. The always. Illuminati. Yeah, exactly. Someone yes. is always watching. <laughs> Uh, at the I next hour, I think. Included, guys, who thought this was a good idea? You thought it was a good idea. I blame you. Where'd Ryan go? He's, <laughs> he's just gone. <laughs> you don't see. The... I don't have my camera on because I'm not going to look at the screen. So. <laughs> well, no, I don't see an image. I just see the little white person. That's racist. I am a little white person. <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> it hurts my brain. That's right. We we, we 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 just about got Aiden choking. So, uh, we've got his Aiden's final will and choke. testament. I, I really Aiden. am choking a little bit right now. Aiden <laughs> in the living room. Death by bread. Burnt toast. Yeah. Well, I'm not in on this. What is this bakery Illuminati? What isn't the bakery Illuminati? <laughs> 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 they they are the puppet masters that pull all the strings for everything. And that's as much inf it's not like I didn't know that we needed new gutters, so at least there's that I hope this is the same company that I replied to. <laughs>
I don't know. Maybe they have a different the company. They're supposed to be doing like a neighbor or something, and the, the neighbor be <laughs> right? like, "Why hasn't somebody done my guts?" Right? Like That's what I'm worried weird about. Minority Report alternate universe where instead of killing potential prim criminals, they just fix your gutters before you. <laughs> Real now, I'm going to sleep. Sure. Um, good night. Bye. Bye. Good night or good day. Bye bye. Oh, yep. Oh, bye. Oh, he's gone. Joe's gone. Um, do you want to wait for M? <laughs> or? Um, no, I think, I mean, it seems like she got cut off and is just there, so I think she'll figure it out. <laughs> alright, 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 then let's end the call. Next then. time you talk to her, say, Shh, um... sure. We all abandon her. Well, no, that we, like, acknowledge that she wasn't talking anymore. We did notice. All right, all right. Oh, hell, you haven't heard anything I said. No, you are. <laughs> I, I happened to turn off the sound a while back. I didn't notice. I'm sorry. I've been talking to you, but you've just been talking over what I said, and I thought I'm probably not that important, but anyway. <laughs> We've been talking about you being gone for, like, five minutes. No, I was here. I was talking to you, but obviously you weren't talking to me. <laughs> oh, so you were there the whole time? <laughs> yes, I was there. Well, now that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Do we that. say anything good? Well, it was all fine, but I did ask you a couple of questions that you never answered. Oh. <laughs> Anything that we need to answer now? <laughs> well, I, I think I said that I'm going to knock off soon and go to bed, and nobody was really interested in that. <laughs> Forget you! Forget you! Yeah, we... You, you, us, like everyone. <laughs>